Just how big were these sets? Well, I'm going to use this arrow to measure the face of the wave. So as you can see, you know, this arrow is the same length as this surfer. He's probably about six feet. So let's lay these out on the wave and see how tall that wave is. Yeah, so those set waves were in that 30 foot neighborhood. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at this guy. Oh! That one poor guy, he's just stuck inside. Look at this. Oh, that is not where you want to be. That was some of the craziest waves I think I've ever surfed in, in Southern California. Like, that was massive. It took me like 20 minutes to make it out. Uh, I got one wave that would have been like a crazy one and I didn't quite make it. And then I got blown all the way to the beach. Uh, so now that's why I'm here because <laughs> uh, I looked out and there was just no chance of making it back out and I literally got blown to the sand. I've never had that happen in Southern California. That was crazy. What a day. This is what I saw when driving into the El Porto parking lot. As you can tell, I was super excited, immediately calling everybody because there was nobody out. I knew I had to get somebody out in these waves. They looked really, really good, really big, and really powerful. Luckily, my buddy Tanner was up for the challenge and came down and met me there at El Porto. All right, so what's the game plan? Uh, we're, we're, we're at El Porto. The waves are... I don't know. They're pretty big for El Porto, I would say. I don't really know how big they are because I haven't seen someone ride it, ride one yet. But uh, I have both a shortboard and an 8.9 and nothing in between. And considering there's this much swell, I think I'm just going to go ride the 8.9 and hopefully pull into a big closeout. Or, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so good right now. I'm freaking out. This is crazy. So you shot on which board? I'm riding, I'm riding my 8.9. My All trusty... Right trust the 8.9 we've been through a lot together taking a lot of waves on the head together uh i've ridden the best wave the best i've gotten the best row of my life on this board in Oce at ocean beach in san francisco last winter and uh she goes with me everywhere are you texting your girlfriend goodbye <laughs> yeah yeah i'm letting her know that i'm going out so that uh <laughs> she knows when to check on me i'll give her a time frame <laughs> love you and goodbye yeah. <laughs> this was probably the most chaotic day I filmed this winter. It was a crazy mixture of this eerie weather. Hard rain beating down on the strand and on the sand. It was raining so hard you could actually see it in my video. And the waves, well, that's the reason that we're here. The waves were huge, unruly, and just kind of dark and ominous, just like the clouds but there was an offshore wind blowing, which gave them a little more look of power. There's just something with that combination of the dark and then the white from the wave's crest just kind of blowing back with the wind. It was amazing to watch, but also very chaotic. After texting his girlfriend goodbye, Tanner headed out. And at this time, there was already a couple other guys that had paddled out. Now this is where things got interesting because the inside wave had better shape. And it was smaller. It was very manageable. It was a head high wave. But then these rogue, let's say triple overhead waves would come in. Sneaker sets, right? Catch you inside. So you couldn't really sit on the inside to catch the ones with a better shape, the more manageable ones. You had to be weary of getting caught inside on one of those vicious sets. Okay, I got to start it off with that paddle out. Right. For those of you that surf know that this is the most excruciating part of surfing is just to try to make it out, especially on a big day. And these guys were in a battle. The waves were relentless coming in one after another and the hold downs were tough. And another one behind that and another one behind that and another one behind that. <laughs> Look at that outside. Look at that. And the reward for making you outside sometimes was just another beating. Oh. 
sitting outside on a big rainy day like this allows you to ponder your life choices and maybe think about religion and how you're going to get back inside. Look how big that thing is. Oh my God. They start off catching a couple of those inside waves just to kind of get your feet under yourself, you know, feel the, the conditions of the water, conditions of the wave. The problem with that is, you guessed right, you got to paddle back out. behind it oh and he's gonna take that one on the head now that heavy offshore wind didn't quite assist these guys in catching the waves having that much wind blow right at you never helpful oh my god that is huge and then tanner caught this wave here which is so close to being just a perfect wave one of those waves that you think about for the rest of your life Unfortunately, Tanner's still going to be thinking about this wave probably for the rest of his life. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be haunted by that wave for, for years <laughs> until I get an opportunity like this again. Ah. There were still a couple of guys out, and then this guy stroked into this wave. That is an absolute gem. Don't know who he is. If you know who he is, please comment below. Let me know, and I'll add it to the text under the video. I'd like to give the guy credit. Luckily, my buddy Justin allows me to sit up at his balcony there. So I had a little bit of protection from the rain. I've been fortunate enough to be able to, to sit up here and drive, mostly dry. I think, I think it's a little damp, but, uh, but it's better than being directly in the rain, so. It is raining sideways. All right, so now this is getting soaked. This is a very expensive lens, so. I'm gonna try putting a towel over it and see if this helps. Don't wanna lose the lens. But anyway, hey, thanks for watching. I'm Brad Jacobson, and I'll see you on the sand. That doesn't look good. Looks like he's limping. That can't be good.